Welcome to Design World's How to Calculate series, where you learn how to apply the most important equations for sizing, selecting, and comparing linear motion and motion control products. In this session, sponsored by Dynatect, we'll learn how to calculate the rigidity of a ball screw assembly. Rigidity is an important factor in sizing a ball screw assembly because it determines how much elastic deformation the ball screw will experience in the axial direction under a given force. An elastic deformation is important because it affects the ball screw's positioning accuracy. Shown here is the equation for the total rigidity of a ball screw assembly. Notice that the total rigidity depends not only on the screw shaft and the ball nut, but also on the support bearings and the ball nut and end bearing housings. The rigidity values of the support bearings are given by their manufacturer, while the rigidity of the nut housing and bearing housings depends on their construction and mounting. For the ball nut, higher preload is commonly associated with higher rigidity, but the ball nut is typically the most rigid component in the system, so increasing the preload from 3% to 5%, for example, has minimal effect on the overall rigidity of the screw assembly. The exception to this would be if you're upgrading from a ball nut with no preload to one that is preloaded. The component with the lowest rigidity value tends to be the screw shaft, and based on the inverse nature of the equation, it has the largest influence on total system rigidity. The rigidity of the screw shaft depends on its cross-sectional area, its modulus of elasticity, which is a function of the material, and the distance between the fixed bearing and the ball nut, known as the unsupported length. When the screw shaft has a free or floating end bearing arrangement, the rigidity is calculated as shown here. When the ball screw assembly has two fixed ends, known as a fixed fixed bearing arrangement, the rigidity of the screw shaft takes into account the distance of the ball nut from each of the fixed end bearings. In the fixed fixed arrangement, the rigidity will be lowest when the ball nut is located halfway between the two fixed ends. In the image shown here, L sub A and L sub B would be equal. Here's the equation for rigidity of the screw shaft when the ball nut is halfway between the two fixed ends. Comparing the equation for rigidity with a free or floating end bearing arrangement with that of a fixed fixed end bearing arrangement, you can see that the screw shaft rigidity is four times higher when fixed fixed mounting is used than with fixed free or fixed floating mounting. So if a ball screw assembly isn't sufficiently rigid for an application, that is if it experiences too much axial deflection, one of the first criteria to consider changing is the end bearing arrangement. Another method to improve rigidity is to use a larger diameter screw shaft. Increasing the screw shaft diameter increases its rigidity, and it also requires a larger diameter ball nut and larger end bearings, which will also contribute to better rigidity. And remember, the reason rigidity is important for ball screw assemblies is to reduce axial deflection and ensure the screw's positioning accuracy isn't compromised. For more information on ball screws and other linear motion topics, visit LinearMotionTips.com or designworldonline.com. Thanks for watching.